Hello. Welcome to the podcast, TSC Talks, the source cannabinoids.com. My name is Joe Woodworth and I am your host. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today on the podcast, my guest is Roberto Palico. He is from Australia, born in Italy. He is a medical researcher, cannabis researcher, and created his own company called Research Can. He's here to talk about his path to getting there. He has a passion for natural medicine, mind-body connection, and chemistry of the body. Led him to study different diseases and therapies. He has always been aware of medical cannabis and is looking for better solutions for medical cannabis companies to invest in research and develop medical products privately and directly as pharma companies always did. So he's, he also touches base or touches down on the old bureaucracy around intellectual property, discouraging the cannabis industry from investing in research, government legislation around cannabis, which is changing rapidly and knowing that we need a different approach. So he developed research can to make a difference, developed with friends who are all experts on formulation development and have years of experience as medical researchers. They understood the necessity of providing medical cannabis industries with the tech to develop products using pharmaceutical enhancement and medical devices. Really interesting information he has to share. So I just want to mention a few things as I'm just really blown away with the results of this hemp-based product that I've been using on my son's angiofibromas and thinking of all you out there in listening land that might be affected by some some condition, whether it's tuberous sclerosis complex or some other similar chronic life-threatening, challenging, challenging condition and have found some workarounds, you know, not necessarily something that's recommended by traditional medicine. I don't care what it is, you know, if it's a journaling technique that helps you or, you know, a supplement, a supplement combination or some kind of device. If you're interested in coming on and talking about it and kind of highlighting other options that might not be highlighted by our system, and that's not meant to bash the system. We're just expanding, broadening, reaching out. I thought it would be interesting to ask anybody out there that might want to talk. Email me, pjlacy6 at gmail.com. Find me on social media and give me a shout. Also, check out our new website, Bringing Everything Together. We still have tsctalks.com, which is the podcast-focused site. And then we have the thesourcecannabinoids.com, spelled out just like that where we have kind of pull everything together with the products that we are bringing to market, our first product for us bathing, as well as information and resources, connections to uh, Mike Robinson's podcast, The Mike Drop. And he is our partner and co-owner of this. So infusing some of his work into this site as well and pulling things together. So check that out. And without further ado, I'm going to stop talking and say, take it away. Roberto. So Roberto, thank you for being on TSC Talks, the podcast. You are an Italian researcher. You're in uh, Australia. Your work has been in Australia. You have a background, a master's degree in chemistry and pharmaceutical technologies. And you graduated from the University of Ferrara in Italy in 2014. And you've been in Australia for six years. You are an expert in drug administration. You worked for Sydney University, University of Technology, UTS in Sydney, Australia as a medical researcher. And you decided to work on medical cannabis research, creating research can. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. So why don't you tell me a little bit about your education and your background, even though I just gave the the resume, fill me in a little Mm -hmm. bit on your background. Um, So like I always studied practically chemistry since Mm -hmm. high school, always been there. My, I don't know, I always loved chemistry. I've always been really interested. So Uh always been my path. And uh, from there, like I decided before I work four years in industry, just because it was a little bit like I wasn't 
design which university do yet so i will you know understand a little bit industry before it was good it was really interesting also go to university a bit after because you can appreciate way more you can understand way more you can learn way more so that's what i've done and i moved to you in ferrara where i got my degree and uh, actually from there before coming in australia i went to do my first research in ireland and the oh, wow. uh, university of pharmacy yeah and uh, in there it was practically for topic administration using a really particular type of patch called microneedle i don't know if you never heard before it practically it been invented to get rid of the syringe to inject vaccine because it's painless and it works supposed to work the same yeah. it works really well it's really good especially in you know like a developing country because maybe they don't have a fridge to keep the vaccine and this one does need that kind of uh, storage so it's okay. really, it was really good and after that i moved to australia uh, okay. where i worked more on the um, at the beginning on uh, inhalation and nasal delivery it was also that really really good that work with two really important professors in the university and i was half research and half um let's say an expert for pharmaceutical because i was doing batch analysis i was doing like tests to see if some um, medicine could go i don't know in europe market all these kind of things so it was let's say half academic already and half industry okay and also that one really, really good. We did some uh, formulation for clinical trials and um, it was really interesting also, you know, starting to get closer to the clinical trial because when you are assigned, this is good, but you always want to see your technology get to people. And uh, to get more on clinical trial, I moved to UTS where I was working directly with a, a gastrointestinal uh, clinic okay. that does uh, reimplantation of microbiota. It's a new technology where you practically uh, implant a microbiota from a health donor uh, to a person is sick because they found that it's really related, the disease is often related with the type of microbiota is in your gut. Okay. So they're trying to change this from the base. It's a new treatment. Here in the CDD in, in Sydney are really good on it, and it was that one really really good because also I've been re I remain really fascinated with the fact of the connection between uh, mind and body when you okay. speak about diseases. And this okay. is awesome, especially on gastrointestinal. Yeah, so this is a little bit my story. You know, that's really I, the gastrointestinal piece with the microbiome is something that I just learned about in probably the last five or six years. Yeah, and I'm telling you, you know, I, as someone who was on a bunch of pharmaceuticals, um, the, the impact on the gastrointestinal system was significant. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, with in combination. So the idea of what you're talking about is sounds really, really interesting. Um, and the mind body connection, I think that's something that while it's ta it's becoming more you know prevalent people are understanding the microbiome and the gut brain connection so that's where you started with the interest in the mind body kind of or sounds like you are you always had that yes a little bit because i would be interested in the chemistry of the body but you can think about the chemistry of the body without thinking about the brain it's always connected it's usually controlling everything so you can't just take it out right. no we are not a machine when you take out the engine there are wheels that you know goes anyway with our brain we are not doing anything <laughs> right right so. right right you know and it seems in modern medicine we've become so hyper focused on specifics and on details of you know yeah, organs yeah, and lost the big picture. So you've studied skin cancer topicals and inhalation administration for respiratory conditions. And then you mentioned the gastrointestinal clinical trial work. So you've been, so how did you get into um, or medical cannabis? Tell me about that piece. So I always been quite interested because I was lucky. I had a professor in university who was already quite aware about cannabis. So he transmitted to me this patient. And uh, also, like, even if cannabis has been, uh, I don't know, sometimes uh, devastated in terms of how dangerous it can be for lungs, 
there are not really many proofs that by yourself we make problems to lungs. So also, you know, studying cancer first, lung disease after, and gastrointestinal, I was always getting more in and more in understanding that cannabis really helped because it's not just helping your body to get rid of, I don't know, a chronic inflammation, but also maybe helping your brain to get rid of the anxious of whatever is in your life mm -hmm. this is not is stopping your body from functioning fine right yes it helps more than one uh disease state and it kind of integrates the mind and body naturally absolutely i agree with you yeah so how did you decide to kind of move into the move into the cannabis space i guess and what are the the challenges or what were the what are the challenges in australia in the academia of so uh, in my uh, career history, I always trying to push a little bit with cannabis. And I started at least six, seven years ago. At that moment, there was no idea even that cannabis could be a medicine. The okay. people, even if they were professors, there was no idea. And so the barrier always been pretty big. Yeah. But now, right now, the, there are proofs and uh, the cannabis coming anyway. Uh, this has become a little bit different. So yeah, I tried to approach again the, the university to try to see if I could, you know, help company and university to work together. Mm -hmm. But university in Australia is really, really good because they have really good laboratory and people. But a major problem of, of university is like you are really connected with uh, availability of the funds. Okay. If there are no grants for the diseases or for the treatment like cannabis, university can't do much for that side. So the other side that they can bring money is, uni is industry. But often, unfortunately, university have a really old bureaucracy around you know, intellectual property. That, so industry have problem to invest on them because they don't have control of what is gonna be the technology. So there are a few things that are showing us, especially at the medical level, because again, culture is coming in university, mm -hmm. but medical level is still too early. Okay. And I think they still need to see the real power of medical cannabis first, and after try to work a little bit better with industry. That's gonna be a way. And I hope since we have connection with academia and industry, I hope maybe one day be, you know, a part of it to try to drag the university in this business. Right. So you kind of set out to do your own thing based on your frustrations and the limitations of what you could do in, in academia and, you know, what you, what you saw as the potential to treat more people and bring this, bring technology so that it can be, you know, so medical cannabis can be used more quickly which yes. I found really interesting and is a, similar to kind of what we're doing in a different way in the U S all over the place. There's th this kind of thing, but it's very, you know, it's not as scientific as what you're doing with your company. So, I so, think so everything you, is important, right? Every part of our work is important. Not just the science, the people need to understand that we are speaking about medicine. So your job is great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about how hard was it for you to step away from your role, from all this, you know, the work that you've done in academia and kind of start your own, your own company. Uh, it was a tough decision. Uh -huh. Definitely. But at the point is when you are a researcher, you need to hundred percent believe on your research because your research becomes your life. Mm -hmm. And if what I believe is medical cannabis, I should research on medical cannabis. And whatever it's going to take, it's going to take. Doesn't really matter. Because, like, I think the only things a real scientist wants, especially medical science, not money, is, you know, trying to help someone. If you really achieve that, doesn't really matter if you... If your career is shifting another way, I'm going to find my way anyway. You know what I mean? Like, the important I'm happy... Of, what I'm doing, that I can help people, and I believe in this. It's gonna uh -huh. be good. Yeah, yeah. So you and your some of your friends or colleagues started Research Can, and tell yeah. me about tell me a little bit about that. Tell me about how you started it and your vision and 
what you do there. Yeah. So uh, what I understood that the major problem at the moment it will be like uh, for cannabis will have results and uh, pharmaceutical formulation. So what I've done at the beginning, I found the best people to fit in this field, especially because you are not just facing one type of administration, we are facing many types of administration. So you need different people, but also these people are able to um, do every type of uh, preclinical test to be able, you know, to help a cannabis company to get to the clinical trial, because here in Australia, it still require a clinical trial. We, the law is gonna change a little bit, but it still requires. So you need to have a massive understanding of your drugs before to go in a clinical trial. Oh yeah. Because a, a you know, like a proper, a full clinical trial can cost a lot of money. And it's not, uh, we cure the cancer. It's not like this. You need to be really specific on what you are treating, which is the biological path you are touching or changing. You know, it's really hard to go through. And uh, even pharmaceutical companies and time go bankrupt for this. So it's not easy. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what I create, I found these people. And I create this small group to bring a cost-worthy research directly inside a cannabis company. Because here in Australia, cannabis company need to face anyway a GMP facility for manufacturing. This is a quite high level. That means they will wow. have a laboratory, a laboratory in the site where we can definitely fit and create for them something that is definitely new. Then one year or two, you're going to have product that uh, putting a droplet under your tones and uh, getting capsule will be a bad dream, a bad memory, because like this is something we invented 80 years ago, 90, maybe 100. We have something better and there is stuff around it. The problem is like, so if you're a cannabis company, you want to do something like this, how you do? Or you go to university or you go to a pharmaceutical company, but both of them, they're going to ask you a lot. Yeah, because yeah. they can keep the intellectual property, all the rest. So I think we need to find a way that is good for uh, the research itself because it needs to be free and for industry as well because they need to invest a lot of money on it. So we need to find a different way to approach. Yeah, that's it. That's really admirable. Um, and like filling a niche that, that no one else has thought of and kind of serves a lot of different purposes in terms of the uh, legality and the research and bringing something to market. Yeah, so it, at what point are you at now with Research Can? Your process and funding and like what's, what's going on right now? Yes, definitely funding because we are anyway like quite a young um, company, yeah. so we are still funding. But in the same time, we are creating prototypes. Uh, you know, we, yes. So this, maybe I shouldn't say much, but we are trying to make already three type of different, totally different administration. They can use different type of extract. And with this, uh, go directly to cannabis company and say, you know, we have the product, we can do it. We can validate it for you. Just let's do it. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I mean, like, you know, we, we are getting a different path. So we need to be straightforward, show them what we are able to do. That's how people, I hope, are going to listen to us. And they're doing it. That's good. Yeah, I was going to say, so are people starting to find, find your company and listen to what you have? And yeah, or is it? Yeah, it's, it's still a bit early because I would say, um, compared definitely to Canada, America, we are three to five years behind. Okay. You. So even the numbers of company, but also uh, it takes time for them. And they will start with the growing facility. Okay. So mm -hmm. not many facilities here in terms of number arrive already on the manufacturing stage. So they don't have the laboratory yet. This okay. will be within the next, uh, hopefully six months for many of them. So in there, you can actually start to think to get in. And unfortunately now with coronavirus, I guess everybody is sort of a slowdown because even yeah. if you need to do 
you know, build something, it's gonna slow down. So I, I hope in the next six months, many companies gonna rise and we really, the ability to bring scientists in the lab because there are many companies here investing a lot and uh, many good people with, the, let's say, um, the right outcome, what they are looking for. There is not just money, of course, it's money, it's a company, <laughs> but for helping and for also helping an industry and uh, a country as well, because uh, Australia have less impact, thanks God to everybody else, not everybody else, but compared to, you know, Italy or um, USA or other country, by still having a good business like Medica Academy can help, you know, also the the country itself. Definitely, definitely. Just so people know, tell me about the legal status of cannabis in Australia right now. I mean, what you told me about someone, you know, wants to even use CBD, the process is uh, they have to go to, they have to get some kind of a doctor sign off or how does that work? Explain that to me. Yes. So since few years now, like he, medical cannabis in Australia become legal. But until now, the only way to access it was through the special access scheme. There is a particular, um, let's say, um, bureaucratic path that you need to take with TGA for asking a non-approved drugs to be prescribed. Okay? okay? That's how you can take CBD, but you can take also TSC. This is depends to the your disease, of course, and the doctor, I'm pretty sure, for example, for pain, they're probably going to go first for CBD. And if it doesn't work, they go for, you know, different ratio or anything else. But at the moment, um, the Department of Health uh, made a proposal for uh, the government uh, to be approved. I mean, uh, in a proposal anyway, they're going to make um, available in the pharmacy some product just contain uh, CBD. I oh, mean, yeah, exactly. There are all other uh, cannabinoids, but unfortunately, this is all of them together that have to be under 2%. So let's say that part is not used, let's say. And uh, so this is going to be without prescription. It's going to be behind the counter. Oh, good. And uh, so it's going to definitely speed up the, the prescription um, steps and... Uh, High hope is gonna be a little bit less expensive because here not sure exactly the cost because I think it varies a bit, but it's still too high uh, for the patient because I think um, I don't want to wrong say this wrong, but I think it's something like two hundred three hundred dollar. Uh, it can be like every month or even often for like every pain or something like that. So, yeah, that's a lot. Exactly. And especially we are still speaking about uh, this proposal is fully for CBD. Only CBD. Yes, there is. So government, for what I know, didn't take any other steps with other cannabinoids and definitely not with TSC. Okay. Yeah. Just listening to you explain it, it just, it sounds so complicated. And I know it's like that in the U.S. in different... It, we are ahead, I'd say, but there's still so many complications uh, with this with this plant that, I, you know, to me, that it's got so many components of it. I think that's what throws a wrench into it, that it's so un, so many unknowns and having those unknowns makes people crazy. So, Absolutely. yeah. Tell me a little bit about the prototypes that you're working on. Are you, are you not supposed to talk about that? I don't want to ask you to talk about something that you don't feel comfortable talking about because um, if you want, I can speak about what the administration can yeah. treat in terms of diseases that I speak about the product itself. Okay. Yeah. Please tell me that. Cause that's really interesting to me. Yeah. So the three administration that we are speaking about is inhalation, nasal and uh, sublingual. You can definitely see the, co uh, the correlation with the inhalation and cannabis is easier and uh, with nasal because nasal let's let's start with inhalation so inhalation is really useful for drugs that problem to be absorbed by other routes okay by other administration way especially when you speak about gastrointestinal because especially compared to a gastrointestinal like an oral administration you step the first metabolic 
step of the drugs, okay? That this means you already probably need a less dose okay. because that body not going to be degraded by the, the, the body, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can assess better some part of your body and hopefully with less dosage to treat uh, even uh, systematic diseases, not just local in terms of lung. That's the good things of inhalation. Wow. Of course, when you speak about COPD, asthma, or this kind of diseases, you are speaking about a local administration, you are, you are focusing that. Vinyl issue can be used definitely for systemic uh, delivery and it works really well. And um, also the compliance of the patient with this kind of device is really high because an nebulizer can be used by a kid to a really old person. So it's really high compliance. And this is really important because for example, now at the moment you have people with pain, they take oil or people uh, also with Parkinson, they when have an attack, they need to vaporize cannabis to have a faster effect. Because sometimes it's like that, the, the oil base it doesn't work enough. Maybe, it's, I don't know, maybe it's not the dose right, or maybe it's not just enough. So they need to vaporize that. But the problem with this, uh, the concentration of what you get inside your body depends from your hair bites, your frequency and blood pressure, how, how big you are as a person, or how much is your weight, and it is uncontrollable. This is not a medical device. That's why medical devices are standard for everybody, because you need to be standard dose. It can't be, oh, I'm excited, I get double the dose. <laughs> this is not a medical formulation, okay? Right. So that's inhalation, let's uh -huh. say. Um, for nasal, instead, the really good things of nasal uh, uh, is discovered uh, is really useful for deliver um, drugs uh, through the uh, encephalic barrier, so to your the brain, brain blood brain barrier. Exactly. Okay. So um, because practically uh, this part behind your nose is very really vascularized and really thin, mm -hmm. so some drug made it in a proper way, they can pass through. So you can imagine that if you want to target the receptor that are actually inside your brain, you it's better go through, you know, just administer directly uh -huh. instead than uh, take it by your mouth, get in the stomach, get regulated, go in your blood, and et cetera, et cetera. So that's the best way, especially if, can you imagine if we can make uh, and that's what we are, we are quite close to make, I hope, a device for, I don't know, a child with um, epilepsy. When a child has an attack, and they can just make, you know, a couple of puff, and it's passed. That's my dream. Oh, that's I just, yeah, I just got chills, because my kids have epilepsy. So, okay. yeah, you know, we're, we're subject to, well, there's a rectal, like there's an emergency, there's an erect, a rectal um, delivery, and then there are some nasal... Um, oh, what is it? It's like a versed type med. Okay. That, yeah. But it's just, I don't know. I think that, that, that I, I can see that it would be so wonderful to have this type of technology that's much more studied and, you know, for cannabis. I, Absolutely. It, yeah. It makes Absolutely. me like really hopeful. So, and then, so you have the, the inhalation, and um, the nasal inhalation. And then what was the third? It was the sublingual? Yes, because anyway, some of the diseases, um, they will need a little bit high dosage. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when you're speaking about pain, if one day we're gonna go against cancer properly, we will need a little bit of dose. And that's, I think, the best way, because anyway, it reduced the onset compared to an oral administration and the onset is probably how fast the drugs make an effect. Right. And this is really important because many times we are facing with diseases that are, you know, chronic or debilitating. So if you have pain, you want to feel the effect of the medicine quite soon. You don't want to spend when wait, I don't know, 80, 90 minutes before the drugs go through your system. 90 minutes is... A long time. Daylight. It's just too long for pain or for other kind of life trade diseases. Yeah, absolutely. What What is your thought on topical delivery? Topical is really interesting, especially 
for skin cancer, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, consider that topic have many uh, limitations in terms of absorption. Right. For any drugs, that's that's what is it because skin is made for don't letting stuff get in, so right. that's why it doesn't really get in. And uh, so I really appreciate it. And I actually, my sister is is using it a little bit because she has some solar, you know, like stain on the face as well, mm -hmm. and she uses it for this as well. Uh, I never had a, uh, to help a person, they need to treat skin cancer personally. So maybe I'm not that aware of how good is it, mm -hmm. but definitely um, we need, since cannabis uh, can be used for so many diseases, we need as many administration way that we can. Because yeah. probably every disease is gonna have a particular type of strain for a perfect administration. That's how it's gonna be in the future. You think? Yeah, I and, hope so. <laughs> yeah, and in terms of like, what is your your thoughts on like strains and uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of talk in the U.S. about you know, there's indica and there's sativa, and they've got like three million names for these strains, and um, it's just out of hand for like a lay person coming in to try to understand medical cannabis and use it. I think that's a big problem. It's overwhelming. We're used to being told what to do by a doctor. And it's this whole learning curve of having to do it yourself. And then there's like a gazillion choices. So do you have any thoughts on like this, the strains and understanding the differences or? The problem of the strain and the, and the name of the cannabis is mm -hmm. a big problem. Yeah. But this is started many years ago when practically men changed the type of strain that nature was creating to go for a more high peak on the plant. No, 100 million plants now, we don't even know what does it mean to get anymore because plants does have, doesn't follow that kind of path anymore. Maybe have the leaves that is, you know, like open and large as a, a indica, but it maybe it's not. So now for a person that actually need to understand by the name or the strain, which is actually the effect of medical is impossible. Yeah. Even for me is impossible. So what well, it must be done. That's why I'm not against the fact that Australia is regulating that much this kind of field. Because if well done, it's what we need. Because we need a, a customer need to be sure of what is getting. And yeah. there are, as you said, there are doctors, there are scientists, there are experts. They should tell you which is the best for your particular case. Not tell you you should take for a person know. like you at this stage, you should take this. That's it. Right. And I think that just because of the lack of understanding of the endocannabinoid system for so many years, the doctors are still catching up to understanding that uh, that piece of science. Yeah, like um, I have to say that I saw the same behavior in scientists. Um, we are really proud of what we know. Everybody. When we realize that we don't know something, we don't we take it personally. You know what I mean? So, oh yeah. Oh yeah, we do. We definitely do. We 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 like to look smart, and when we don't know something, we don't look smart. <laughs> well, so, I mean that's logical. Absolutely, and uh, I think uh, doctor, I mean like any doctor in different country, is slightly different because these are a different kind of system. But I still hope that, and I know that many doctors are really close to patients. And now is the patient is asking for the drugs. So doctor is catching up, even if they may don't believe it, because it's working and because the patient is asking it. So if for scientists, we still need to get there. We are still, we actually, doctor is ahead of us. The more of them, they're changing. Science is still a bit more, you know, hard-head. But we get there, we're gonna get there. That's good, that's good, yeah. I, I hadn't heard that before, I, that the um, the doctor is working, you know, hands on with patients and they're asking for it. So they, they have a they have a um, impetus to learn it while a researcher, you know, is a different you're kind of a step removed from the patient. So it's yeah, it's harder to see the results. Absolutely, and, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I think what you're doing is great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, very impressive. And I, I'm sure I didn't give it all the, um, the detailed scientific uh, explanations, but uh, just to get a sense of what's going on in another country, I guess internationally, can you like interact with other countries in terms of like products or is it pretty off limits? And, uh, and no, actually Australia is even to open um, foreign uh, products. This is one of the, I would say, one of the major problems the cannabis industry is facing here right now. Because, for example, to go to be prescribed to the special access team, as I said, the product doesn't need to be registered. Yeah. So if you, you know what I mean, like your hello from other country coming and getting here this product, they maybe are not even be tested. They definitely doesn't follow the Australian procedure. And so, yeah, we have definitely a lot of like product from overseas. Okay. Definitely it's going to be problem if you want to buy, uh, let's say, without following the legal step. Like if you just, you know, go mm-hmm. on the website, you buy from Canada, this is illegal. This is 100% illegal in Australia. This okay. is another problem because the access of the black market is there. But the product they are not in the black market are not yet there. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. There's a lot of that still in the U.S. You know, the longer it takes for these, this technology and this science to be developed, the more uh, risk there is for developing the black market because people know they understand it works. So you know, we need people like you that are bridging the gaps. So we can accelerate this process a little bit and get, you know, really beautiful technology and delivery systems into the hands of people that need it. It's very moving. And yeah, thanks for what you're doing. It's absolutely phenomenal. So I'm just looking through your your notes here because you had a really good statement on your vision. But um, yeah, more more or less, I think we we go through everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, your vision is to use medical chosen extracts more efficiently to deliver, deliver to better target conditions using medical products and having pharmaceutical formulations to deliver cannabis extracts using different administrative pathways can increase the use of medical cannabis and the use of available technologies will allow the reduction of active ingredients required and a real reduction of therapy costs, improving bioavailability and efficacy of the drug. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. Because the, the major problem here in Australia is not just accessibility, it's also the cost. And with these, you, if, you re, if you reduce the dose, you reduce the cost. Because what it costs inside the, the product is the active ingredient, that is cannabis. So if you need less to do the, exactly the same effect, you reduce the cost. Yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah, now it's all the dots are connecting for me. All right. That's thank all right. you That's so right. much, Roberta. This was great. <laughs> exactly. All right. I, Take care. Have a good day. You too. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. And that is it. It is a wrap. Thanks so much to Roberto Polico. Check out our site, tsctalks.com. We will have the show notes and the podcast up there. Obviously, I guess if you're listening to it, you know that. Check out our new website, thesourcecannabinoids.com. Order our new product, Forest Bathing. And check out our new site, like I just said. And take care. Keep tuning in. And if you're interested in being on the podcast have something alternative or off the grid that you want to share, please reach out to me, pjlacy6 at gmail.com. Love you all. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.